Hey, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. Today's tutorial is how to photograph shorebirds. We're down at Ocean Shores. It's foggy this morning, but we're going to work close in the rocks here with shorebirds like wandering tattler, ruddy turnstone, surf birds. We'll keep the sky out of the background and that'll work pretty well. We'll have to have a pretty high ISO. We'll try to use a little pop fill flash to brighten up the birds a little bit and we'll see how it goes. I'm using the Canon 7D Mark II and because the sensor is a little bit smaller, it has a crop sensor, I don't want to push the ISO up too high, so I'm going to push it up to 640 ISO. I can push it to 800 if it's too dark, but we can see from these images of black turnstone that 640 ISO looks like it's going to do pretty good. I've got the sky in the background and it appears pretty gray and uninteresting to me. But in this next image of a ruddy turnstone, the background is rocks and it adds more texture and interest to the image. So we want to try to keep the sky out of the images and shoot at the highest ISO that we're comfortable with. Sometimes adding a little bit of fill flash can dramatically change the image. In this image, the, it's kind of a dark cloudy day, adding a little fill flash to this rock pigeon is going to allow me to bring out the colors of the bird. And you can see in this image that the colors are really brought out. You can see the greens and the lavenders in the neck, and the image looks a lot better. The bird looks a lot better, and we're just using a little bit of fill flash from that on-camera flash. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two rock dove images, and you can see the one on the left. The bird's a lot brighter, there's a lot more color in it, and that is just from using the little bitty pop-up flash on these cameras. Now there's a couple of limitations with using the pop-up flash. One is that your fastest shutter speed is going to be limited to the flash sync speed. So this image was taken at 1 250th of a second, and that really blurred the wings. The face is still pretty sharp, and so the image works, but I got a lot more wing blur than I wanted because of that. The second problem that we're going to have is because the pop-up flash is on camera, it's going to give us a, a little bit of ghosting in the eye, it's going to give us a steely eye, or it's going to give us a red eye. Just something to watch for when you're using the pop-up flash. Point of view is really important with shorebird photography. We're really trying to get eye level. In this particular case, I'm sitting up on a rock because I don't want to sit in the wet seaweed, and the bird came really close to me, kept walking closer to me, so I'm kind of shooting down on it. I don't really like that image. I like this one a little bit better where I'm sitting down in the sand, the sand and the bird are still lower than me, but I'm my angle of view is a little bit less, and so that looks a little bit better to me. With this black-bellied plover, I was able to drop to one knee and get a closer to eye level point of view on the bird, and this also just by sitting down or dropping down two or three feet, you can often get a better angle on the bird and get a better shot. With this black-bellied plover, it's further away and I cropped the image. The further away the bird is, the less the steepness in the angle that you're shooting at. And so just by having the bird further away, cropping the image and post-processing, I was able to create what looks like a pretty eye-level view. In mixed flocks of shorebirds, look for the unusual birds. So here's a red knot. Not very many of them stop on Grace Harbor on the fall migration, the southbound migration. So it's a little bit unusual to find this one mixed in with three dowagers. But that's the kind of thing that we want to photograph when we want to look for these. Here's a juvenile red knot, and it also happens to be with three dowagers. It's just a little bit unusual to see these on the outer coast. And so if you see something unusual, get its picture. In this next slide that we're going to do here, we have a Lee Sandpiper and a Western Sandpiper. Lots of people have difficulty telling these apart, but yellow legs versus black legs, shorter bill versus longer bill, browner versus a little bit of uh, rufous or reddish on the back of the Western on the right, all make these interesting pictures, and so strive to get this kind of a picture when you're out photographing shorebirds. When you're out photographing shorebirds, look around and see if there's any other shots. I mean, we're all there to get that really tight shot of the shorebird, but look around and see if there's other images. There were a bunch of cowbirds and starlings on these wires, and so I got this shot, and I was pretty happy with it. I was able to lighten it up in post-processing enough so that it looked pretty nice to me. With this image of western willets, I overexposed the frame just to give it a more creative, different kind of a look. And it's something that you can play with in post-processing or when you're out in the field. But just look for the unusual, try to, try to get something different. Here's a shot of some pilings going off to the distance at Bottle Beach State Park, a great place for shorebird photography. 
And this is perspective. Perspective is adding depth to your images. Point of view is your relationship to the subject. So getting down lower changes your point of view. Getting down lower doesn't change the perspective. The perspective is having you know things go off into the distance. Hey, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be doing a more in-depth look at shorebird photography equipment. But in the meantime, you can uh, check the links out below in the description area. And there's a Amazon link there that shows the equipment that I use for my bird photography. Remember, if you want to learn more about bird photography, you can get a copy of my book on Amazon. It's available as a Kindle and as a trade paperback. Check that out on Amazon.com. Tim Boyer Photography. And then the second way that you can really learn more about bird photography is to consider joining me on one of the workshops that I lead. These workshops are held in locations throughout the western United States where there are plenty of birds so you get lots of practice and lots of instruction. Hey, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.